Hello, and welcome back to Mr. Anderson Plays Jake Hunter, Detective Story, Memories of the Past. You can tell it's a detective story, because it says it right here. Anyway, last time, uh, we were looking for a lady, uh, what was her name? Um, Eva. We were looking for Eva. And uh, her boyfriend, Yul uh, Holloway, Harry Holloway, to be exact, uh, asked us to um, look her up because she was a, she worked for a consulate, the Barakan consulate. Uh, after asking around a little bit, uh, we discovered that no one saw her in the last three days, but she did seem concerned about something when um, Harry and her went to Bar Fjord. Uh, we were told that by a cougar um, who probably listens to uh, Def Leppard. Um, because, you know, all cougars listen to Def Leppard. But anyway, let's get on with the show. We just got done thinking, and he didn't see any holes in his logic. What I'd learned so far supported Holloway's story, and suggested that she'd gotten into something bigger than she expected. I was still thinking when... Marcy began to blink and beep. I glanced at the call ID. Yep, we saw this already. I will only say this once. Leave this case alone. The voice on the other end spoke with a thick accent. Only Barry re registered his words, but the line went dead. The silence was every bit as ominous as the warning had been. Yes, and this is where we ended it last time. To be continued. All it had taken was a single call to bring me to Depona. Bring me out to Depona. I thought it would be a nice and safe missing person's case. A little bit of easy cash. I'd been wrong. Leave this case alone. As much of this time took... As much time as it took the man on the phone to speak these words, the shape of the case had changed. It was starting to look like it wasn't going to be the easy case I'd hoped. But then, if it was easy, everyone would do it. Seaside Conspiracy. Case filed, too. Yulia, a coffee in each hand, looked concerned and curious. She's like that German beer lady who's holding, like, the, the, the beer, um... Whatever they call them, I know there's a beer mugs, except without the big boobs and blonde hair. Yulia, coffee in each hand, looked concerned and curious. So, he just told you to back off, and then hang up? Yeah, babe, that's about the size of it. Near as I can tell, he called from a payphone. Sounds like someone doesn't want you to know who they are. Well, I think that the accent's a dead giveaway. It'd be tough to figure out who they are just with just a voice. Hey, give me a little credit here, doll. He may not have said much, but I think he said enough to give me an idea about what kind of person he is. Hmm, his ethnicity? He had a thick accent, so I think it's reasonable to conclude he's not a native English speaker. In a town like Depono, it's likely that means he's not from the U.S. either. If there was more than one person with him, they probably weren't native English speakers either. What makes you say that? because they, they didn't say much. They were keeping the call short in order to... Hmm, mask identity. They probably wanted to mask their identity. Still, the man on the phone had a very distinct foreign accent. If he isn't working alone, it's natural to assume no, but nobody with him had any less of an accent. Or if they did, I'd recognize their voice. Well, that does make sense. But there's something else that's been bothering me. What? How did the person on the phone know who I know who I was? And how did they know my cell number? It's a good point, sir. We've only been in Depono a day. Exactly, babe. Plenty of people back home have my number, but almost no one here does. Besides, how many people might have looked might have my number and know I'm looking for Eva? Well, that's not too hard, sir. There's an easy way to find that out. You bet there is. The answer is my... business card. The clue is on my business card. Your business card? Just think about it for a moment, babe. I've got the office's address and phone number on my cards, and what else? Of course. Then so that would mean anyone at Depono with your cell phone number would have to be someone you, you gave your business card to. Bingo. Of course, it's possible someone from back home followed me out here. But for now, let's just focus on the business cards. Of course, sir. 
Looks like I'll be heading back out. I'll figure out who visit the places I went yesterday. See if I can't run into a few people I gave business cards to. Well, I hope you find them. Or her. Well, yeah, well, that makes two of us, babe. He sure seems to know a lot more about this case than I do. Alright, time for me to be heading out. Be careful, sir. It sounds like someone's pretty serious about keeping you away from this case. Uh, I've had worse threats. They're usually more direct, too. An anonymous call, a phone call is really a bit of a nice change. If you say so, sir, sir. I wanted to have a quick talk with Holloway before I left. I hope he maybe he remembers something that might help. Alright, let's talk to the receptionist, I guess. Would you mind calling Mr. Holloway for me? Of course, sir. One moment, please. <laughs> Sorry, I had to clean my nose. Mr. Hunter, have you found Eva? He looked even worse than he had the day before. I doubt he'd even slept. He was always putting me first. That's why, that's why I have to. Don't you worry about Eva. I'll find her. Listen, Holloway. I need to tell you everything you noticed about Eva before she disappeared. Even small details are important. Did you notice anything? Eva. Please come back soon, Eva. That's not going to help. That lot of help he was going to be. Um... Let's see if Yulia can pull her womanly charms on. Mr. Holloway looked even more depressed than yesterday. Yeah, you're right. He sure is pretty tore up about for that dame. Look, doll face, you think you'd keep an eye on the fellow today? Certainly, sir. I've got nothing better to do in my old hometown than look after a distraught stranger. I'll give you a call if he decides to start speaking in complete sentences and says something useful. Thanks, doll. You're a peach. She doesn't look like a peach. But anyway, we're going to move on to the, uh, the consulate. There we go. A warm breeze ruffled my hair, but even the perfect weather couldn't take my mind off the case. The Brockton consulate, where Eva had worked before, before her disappearing act. I tried to talk to the consul before, it had been shut down. I was hoping I'd have more luck the second time around. What did I want to do? Hmm. Well, I guess the first thing would be to move inside. Right. I wasn't sure why I'd spent so long just looking at the consulate. I made my way to the front door. The air inside was cool. As usual, stone is an excellent natural insulator. I arrived at the Barack consulate's lobby. So, uh, let's talk to, uh, Iris. This lady, she's kind of weird looking. I don't know, she looks alien almost. I see you've decided to come back. Well, to be honest, I just couldn't stop thinking about you. I had to see you again. In all seriously, though, seriousness, though. She, he was being serious with that. He was just trying to get a bite, you know. Though, would you mind if I asked you a few questions? Of course not. To be honest, it's kind of boring here. What it might have been a conversation. She's got a sharp-ass chin. She'd, like, stab you to death with it. Sharp-ass lips. Everything on her is sharp. Anyway. To be honest, it's kind of boring here. I wouldn't mind a bit of conversation. Business card. Did you show anybody else the business card I gave you yesterday? Um, I met with the consul right after I saw you. I gave him your card myself. Was he the only person who saw it? Yes. I mean, assuming he hasn't shown it to anyone. Um, did I do something wrong? Oh, no, 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 you did fine. I just wanted to know if the consul got my card. Consul meeting. The consul, is the consul busy today? I was hoping that I might be, might get to see him this time. Hold on just a moment. Iris picked up the inter-office phone and started talking to someone. The consul will meet you. Uh, I figured that much. He asked me to take you to his room on the third floor, so if you'll just follow me. I see. Thank you. I followed Iris up to Bosk's room on the third floor. As she opened the door, she leaned over toward me and, with a small smile, whispered in my ear, 
hope everything goes well. Good luck. Okay, whatever. It's getting a little uh, spicy with me. The room was decorated with countless artifacts and pieces of art. It looked more like a museum than a consul's chamber. Then again, I'd never met a consul before. So examining some of the particularly interesting artifacts, the man entered the room and walked toward me. Yo, I'm Mr. Hunter, I presume? Oh, why am I speaking with a Chinese accent? Whatever. Let's talk. Let's introduce myself. Thank you for your cooperation. I'm Jay Hunter, a private investigator. Iris had told me about you. I've also been worried about Eva ever since she went missing. Hmm. Eva's absence. What was the last time Eva came to work? Let me see. I think it was three days ago. I must admit, without her capable assistance, I'm having a hard time of it, running constantly and all. Three days. Well, that fit with all the other stories. Eva's work. What kind of work did Eva do here? Eva was my secretary. She was my personal assistant. So you two were pretty close, huh? <laughs> That's an interesting way to put it. So he would notice something suspicious about her. Was there anything unusual about Eva before she disappeared? Not that I can recall. You were right next to her all day, every day. Don't tell me you didn't notice something. Like I said before, I didn't notice anything unusual about Eva. Nothing whatsoever. It had only been for a split second, but he hesitated. I knew that meant something, but I didn't know what. Usually when someone basically just says, no, I never noticed anything, like right out, they're usually lying, or they do know something. And they do know something. Hmm, what was your alibi? If you don't mind my asking, where were you four days ago? <laughs> you know, it's kind of early. What kind of question is that? I don't have to tell you that. That's personal. Ah, oh, shit. I pushed my luck a little too far. Well, where's my card? The business card I left for you yesterday. Did you show it to anyone else? No, I have it right here. His answer was short and looked to be the last one I was going to get from him. Must decided our conversation was over. Well, I guess we can show ourselves out. Yeah. He wasn't going to tell me anything else, and I wasn't doing myself any favors hanging around his office. But I intended to see it that next time I met the consul, I had something on him. I made a busk for his time and showed myself out. The sound of my footsteps echoed down the stairs. There I was, back in front of the consulate's reception desk. What did I want to do? Hmm. So what did we want to do? Well, let's talk to Iris. Oh, thanks. Look, thanks. I wouldn't have been able to talk to, uh, to the console without your help. The conversation was a few minutes. Well, you're welcome. I was happy to help. Oh, huh? Uh, Eva's very important to me. She's the one of the only friends I have. Please find her. And it's nothing. Never mind. If you need anything else, please don't hesitate to come back. I'd be happy to help you. You can't do that. I hate when people do that. And, uh, no, nothing, nothing. Don't worry about it. There's something. You can tell me it now. I will, thanks. I got the feeling she wasn't just talking about the case. Well, I guess we can leave. As I was walking out of the consulate, Marcy began to ring. I hit talk and I stepped out into the spring sun. Jake, my boy, are you there? Hey, old man. How's Strix? I talked to the detective who was the jurisdiction over the, that apartment. I worked things out with him. Thanks, King. I really appreciate it. I don't have time to waste with the police rip right now. I'm still not sure what's going on over here, but I've got a feeling it's going to get worse before it gets better. He says that a lot. He said that the last case. You're talking about that case with the missing foreign woman. Yeah. You should go visit Mr. Mr. Shaw. He's a part of the Special Crimes Unit with the Depoto Police. He a friend of yours, King? Why, yes, he is. In fact, he's the fellow I spoke to about your little apartment adventure. He might be able to help you out. I told him all about your case. 
I don't know what I'd do without you, old man. Thanks again. Merely scratching your back, my friend, so that someday you may return the favor. Be sure you give me a call when you get back to Hospicio, all right? We said our goodbyes and King hung up. Hung up. Detective Sharp, huh? I figured couldn't hurt to see what he had to say. Better than looking at that sharp dame in there. Um, other location. I guess we're going there? This is new. Okay, let's, let's check it out here. I like how they blend uh, real-world photos of locations in this game, because they're just too lazy to draw the backgrounds. The Initium Street Station is in the middle of the Elevios District. is one of the oldest stations in the country. It had been in operation since the Great Depression. Even today, its position in the middle of town gives it a great deal of influence. I found myself in front of the Elevios Police Department's in in Initium Street Police Department. That doesn't look like any building I've ever seen in America. You can't be fooling me. What did I want to do? Well, I guess we can move inside. I pushed my way through the door. The lobby was the polar opposite of the exterior. Modern styling with glass, linoleum, and particle board everywhere. Hmm. They buy everything from Ikea here. How was I going to get in touch with Detective Sharp? What did I want to do? Well, the first thing to do, as we always do, is talk to... Oh, never mind. Uh, I, want to I want to talk to the receptionist. A harried police officer behind the desk was doing his best to keep the police running smoothly. The line to the front desk snaked through the room, like an anaconda put in a cage half its size. My anaconda don't want none unless you got the case on... I really didn't want to get, to get in that line. There were several police officers and visitors milling about the lobby. I noticed most of the visitors were there for traffic violations. Well, they're not going to waste their time with uh, traffic court. Hmm. Now, let's find the visitor. Ugh. Instead of dealing with some stupid traffic violations, why don't they go catch some corrupt cops? Hey man, don't you agree? People always say that. They're just trying to, you know, shirk the blame onto someone else. What can I do for you? I need to talk to one of your officers. A police officer. What's your name? Jake Hunter. Mr. Hunter. Now that is the name of the off. What is the name of the officer? And what is his department? King had told me his name and his department. Uh, why wouldn't we answer? Answer. What is his department? Special crimes. He's in the special crimes unit. You know, when the kid with the helmet attacks somebody in the special crimes unit. And his name? His name was... Sharp. His name is Detective Sharp. Thank you. One moment, please. The officer be behind the desk picked up a phone and began to mumble into it. I couldn't hear the conversation over the din. Detective Sharp was expecting you. You should be out shortly. If you could just wait over there. Got it. Thanks. There was nothing to do but wait. I sat down on a bench near the wall and watched people walk in and out of the lobby. Observant people watching is one of the most important skills for a P.I. It was long before my brain, my brain began to notice and categorize interesting people in the lobby. A tattooed biker with Jesus saves and blazes across his back, holding an infant and looking concerned. Several boisterous teenagers in handcuffs. They looked rich. They'd been in. they'd be out of the station in hours. An old lady clutching a set of handlebars that appeared to be only the remaining parts part of a bike older than she was. What? Is she gonna start talking to it? Like the log? Weird. Um Looking in the lobby, trying to decide my next move, a man walked up to me. Are you Mr. Hunter, the private investigator? Yes, I'm Jake Hunter. What's it to you? I'm Detective Sharp. King has told me about you. Sharp led me to a corner of the room and behind a small partition. Sorry, but this is the best I can do right now. The rest of the office is full. King said you wanted to talk to me. I do. I've got a few questions I was, as I was hoping 
I was hoping you could answer. Well, let's talk to Sharp about Eva's room. What was the status of Eva Christina in Christina's room? She's got a weird shaped head. I had some of my men go over and check it out. There's not a lot we can do, though. No report's been filed, so officially there's no case yet. We've just preferred to preserve the site and lock the doors of the apartment for now. That's really all we can do. Good enough. Did Kings explain the case to you? Yeah. But without a missing persons report, there's not much the police can do. The fact that she works for the consulate makes things even more complicated. Well, that's why I'm here. What do you know about Busk? The consul. Officially, there is no official uh, position. Officially, officially, there is no official position on the consul. But if the king likes you that much, you can't be that bad. Just remember, you didn't hear this from me. There's been a rumor going around for a while about the consul. That he's into some bad shit. We're trying to get a lead on him, but that damn, damn diplomatic immunity is making our lives hell. Rumor, you say? Just what kind of bad shit is the consul into, according to this rumor? Smuggling. Maybe human trafficking? We don't know how he's doing it. We know smuggled goods have been passing through the consulate, but we can't get past the diplomatic community to nail the bastard. Interesting. I wonder if that cell phone call had anything to do with it. Phone call? Oh, some chump called me last night. Told me to leave the case alone, real threatening. Hey, that sounds dangerous. Be careful. You think this is the first time I've been threatened? If I let it get to me every time, I'd never get anything done. Spoken like a man of the law. Well, if anything happens, be sure to keep me in the loop. Let's talk about King. I was just curious. How do you know King? King? <laughs> I suppose you could say he was like my mentor. He helped me out a lot when I was still a greenhorn. His passion for the truth is something I strive to match, even now. Hmm. Let's see if we can visit the apartment. Can I take a look at Eva's apartment? What? I thought you went over it before King called me. Well, sort of. I couldn't be too feral. I didn't want to disturb a potential crime scene. Hmm. Well, my men didn't find anything of interest. I know, there's a good chance I'll come up empty handed, but who knows, maybe I'll notice something, I think it's worth a shot at least. Hmm. You're just like King said you'd be. Fine. I'll tell the apartment manager to keep the door unlocked today. Let us know if you find anything alright. Like, the brown suit is very popular right now. I wonder what the time era is, is it like 1980s right now? I think it is, because this game was originally made in, what, 1987? And these are the, what, the first four cases that we're playing through right now? Alright, well, um, I guess we can go visit Eva's, pl Eva's place. Go outside. I wove my hand, I wove my way through the crowd of door cops and civilians to the door, shoved it open and walked outside. I found myself in front of the Initium Street Police Station. What did I want to do? Well, we're going to move to Eva's place. There you go. The spring sun shone down on my back as I walked towards Eva's apartment. Now that I think about it, a lot of these buildings in this area are made of concrete. Just giant plasters of it. There isn't many buildings in America that are made entirely out of concrete. So... They're taking images from another area of the world that's not America. Probably Japan, because that's where the game's made. It was a good distance from the police station, and by the time I arrived, I was beginning to sweat. I found myself outside of Eva's apartment. Concrete would be way too expensive and efficient for Americans to use it on their buildings. Unless it's like a glass bunker or something like that, but even that's done with, like, metal plating with concrete poured on top of it. Alright, well, I guess we can just move inside. Eva's room was unlocked, just like Sharp had promised. I felt on edge being there, 
but I made my way in. Hmm. Well, let's inspect stuff. Uh, the dresser. Inside. Look at. Did we look inside the dresser? Someone had gone through the dresser, but it didn't look like anything was taken. Her, even her bank statements and a couple other personal documents had been left behind. There was some jewelry and chain on top of the dresser. Whoever trashed the girl's room had either been in a real hurry or pretty tore up about something. Let's take a look at that shoebox again. Her shoebox was a mess, so I figured I, had, I, had, I figured someone had gone through it too. It did seem a little strange, though. Why not just dump the box out on the floor? Hmm. Clothing case. I didn't look. It didn't look like anything had been taken from the clothing case. But then, how would I have known? Exactly. The vanity table had a number of bottles in it. I wasn't really sure. I wasn't really sure what any of them were for. The police had already been over the room. I figured they wouldn't mind if I borrowed a few bottles of whatever they were. It didn't look like anything else expensive had been taken, but I didn't exactly know what to look for in a woman's room. I figured I should ask someone who was more experienced than me with that sort of thing. I guess he's trying to tell me to call Yulia. Yeah. I figured Julia might have at least some knowledge of what I should be looking for in a woman's room. I called Julia. The phone rang a few times, and then I heard Julia pick up. Hello, Julia speaking. Hey, babe, I'm in. I caught myself. Is Mr. Holloway there? No, I'm sorry. He isn't. No, no, that's, that's good. I don't think we want to let him know that someone trashed him's apartment yet. He's in bad enough shape already. Good idea, sir. Anyway, I'm over here at the apartment. I'm having some trouble. I don't know what I should be looking for in a woman's room. Besides, you know, the average women's stuff. Pags, uh, pads, PMS pills, all that good stuff. I'll send you a quick email with a few pictures of the room right now. Let me know if anything catches your eye. It would be my pleasure. It, I took a guess about what might be important and snapped a few shots. I did find a shirt that said... The force is female. She was a feminist. <laughs> Probably not. I don't think Ava's that petty. She snapped a few shots. I'd only just finished sending the last picture when my phone rang. Well, I can't tell what clothing might have been stolen or if there's any jewelry missing, but there was one thing. What is it? I did notice something strange about her makeup. Most women use a toner and a moisturizer daily, and those two items weren't in any What if she just didn't use a toner or a moisturizer? Well, are you? what are you getting at? It's almost like she was leaving on a trip. A trip? Interesting. Alright, thanks babe, you've been a real help. As I hung up the phone, Yuli's words echoed through my mind. Now, generally, um, I mean, if someone's being abducted, uh, they're not going to have the time to grab their clothing and their moisturizer and toner, whatever that is. Um, usually toners for your printer, so I guess women just like scrape toner on their face from a printer. I'm being sarcastic. I know what toner is. Anyway, unless she was told that she was go going to be taken somewhere for a while to get to do something, but it actually turned into an abduction. Who knows? A trip. I guess we can move out. Um, the only other person that we gave our phone, our business card to, was that uh, the cougar, I think, at the bar. I'd seen enough. Eva's room wasn't going to tell me anything more. It was time to move on. With Yuli's word about the rip still on my mind, but about a trip still on my mind, I pulled the shut behind the door shut behind me. The kind of kidnapper. What kind of kidnapper gives their victim time to pack makeup? I arrived at Eva's apartment building. What did I want to do? Well, let's move to the bar. Where's the bar? Here it is. Fjord. I started down the road that I knew led to the fjord. 
as the sun shone down on me and the soft noises of the ocean drifted past on the wind, I felt myself beginning to relax. I also felt the many comments coming in about how I'm pronouncing bar forward or fjord wrong. I had to admit it, the Pono has a charm you just can't find in the Spicio. The bar fjord looked like it had just been open for the night. Was it night already? Jeez, what time did we wake up? We didn't spend that much time walking around yet. Well, I guess we could just move inside. As I pulled the thick wooden horse open, a cluster of bells hung from the inside of the handle rang, announcing my entrance. I bellied up to the bar. What did I want to do? Let's inspect the bar. It was shiny. The bar had just opened for the night, but at this hour, things were still pretty dead. The only, th only customer in the place was the lonely middle-aged woman from the night before. I didn't really want to talk to her if I didn't absolutely have to. Well... I guess... We have to talk to the woman. Can't get enough of this place, can you? Yeah, sorry to bother you again. Oh, it's no bother at all. I was hoping to find someone I could chat with. Well, um, it's about business, trust me. It's about Eva, isn't it? I know. Unfortunately, I think I've already told you all I know. But actually, I wanted to ask you about something else. Something else? What is it? Seems like I piqued your interest. But I'm gonna have to let her down. Remember the business card I gave you yesterday? Have you shown it to anyone? Oh, you mean it wasn't just for me? Oh, yes, I think I did show it to someone. Hmm, who did you show it to? Who? Well, after you left, another man came by. He was, he was asking about Eva, too. I thought I could help out, so I told him your story. He said he wanted to get in touch with you, so I showed him the business card you gave me. Did, did I do something wrong? No, no, nothing, it's fine. The man. This man, the one you showed my card to, can you tell me about him? He was Asian. He had a real thick accent. I kind of had trouble understanding him. The Chinese man? I think. I think he was Chinese. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was Chinese. I don't know what it was, but he was kind of scary. I got scared, I didn't know what else to do, so I showed him your card. Sorry, it sounds like I got you in some kind of trouble. Don't worry about me, man. You actually did me a favor. Really? Thank well thank goodness. This guy, he a regular here? No, uh, no, I've never seen him before. Uh, I'm sure I'd never forget a face like that. She looks like she'd have like the doctor girlfriend voice, that like real deep voice like hello, hello. He didn't look like a criminal. There was just something about his eyes. Listen, if he drops by again, think you can give me a call and let me know? Sure, no problem. A friend of Eva's is a friend of mine. Every time I talk to her, I just feel kind of dirty. Let's talk to Pietro. Pietro. Eva. Excuse me, do you know a woman named Eva? PlayStation and Snatch. There was no point. I had no idea what he was trying to say. Growing increasingly frustrated with my inib in inability to communicate with Pietro, I realized that Yulia might know his language. Yeah, I was just about to say that he took the words right out of my mouth. I resolved to ask her about translating it when I got back to the hotel. English. Do you speak English? No dice. I, was, I wasn't going to get any, anywhere with this guy without the aid of a translator. Well, that kind of sucks. I guess we can leave. I was getting late, even for me, so I figured it was high time I was heading back to the hotel. It was a moonless night, and more than a few, more than a few of the streetlights were out, plunging my walk back to the hotel in near total darkness. I hadn't much progress on the case, but any progress is better than none at all. It was a long walk back to the hotel, so I decided to take the time to organize my thoughts. I wonder how much Jake gets paid to do this. I mean, he didn't even discuss price with this gentleman here. With Harry Holloway. I'd run from one end of the Pono to the other, trying to find out who'd made the phone call. 
first. Oh, we're in a think mode. When I asked Iris about my business card, she said, Gave to console. Yeah, she said she gave it to a busk herself right after I left. So a busk had gotten my card, but once he had it, he put it away. He told me he put it away and hadn't shown it to anyone. After meeting Busk, I'd gone to Initium Street to meet another new friend. King had told me to go talk to Detective Sharp at the Initium Street Police Station. Sharp has let me in on a rumor about the console that was circulating about at the apartment. What was the rumor going around about the Moroccan console? Smuggling. The cops were sure Busk was smuggling something, but they didn't know how. Sharp gave me the go-ahead to have another look at Eva's apartment. With Yulia's help, I managed to figure out what was missing. What did Yulia point out was missing? Um, makeup? Her daily toner and moisturizer were missing. I wasn't quite sure what to make of that. At the bar fjord, I went out. Uh, I found that out the middle-aged tequila aficionado I'd share an evening with had shown my card to some other guy. He was a Chinese man. She said that she said he spoke with an accent she believed was Chinese. I turned the day's events over and over in my mind, examining them from every angle. With the facts as straight as I could get them, I turned my thoughts turn my mind to thoughts of nicer things. I have a feeling that Ava wasn't abducted. I think Ava's predicament right now has something to do with the story of Mulan that the Chinese man told me. Like scotch. I was thinking about the bottle hiding in my suitcase as I trudged across the silent parking lot. What was Yulia doing, I wondered. Hmm. That's purdy. I thought he had a striped suit. What? I barely even registered the first one of several more, f uh, when several more followed, as if to drive the point home. I knew that sound all too well. I heard it a thousand times on the street of New York, and a thousand more times in the back alleys of the Spicio. The sound of gunshots. I will only say this once, Mr. Hunter. Leave this case alone. I remembered the voice on the phone. I just assumed the voice was, uh, was warning me. But if it wasn't for me, then... Then that meant... Shit. I broke into a run across the silent park, the silent parking lot. Blood pounding in my ears. I could feel the icy hand of fear close around my heart. I hope to God I was wrong. The bee continued. Well, I hope you guys are enjoying... I am. I wonder who was getting shot at. Hopefully it wasn't Yulia. Maybe it was Holloway. Was he back? Hmm. And who is the Chinese man that gave us those questions three? And what does Busk have anything to do with him? Or Eva? Well, I guess we'll find that out next time. Please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. Because it makes me feel good. And make sure you... Have a good night. Good night.